Hey there guys, I'm Dengs564 and this is a new Let's Play series of 8 Armor RPG and since nobody <laughs> watching uh, New California and I'm still in the mood for post-apocalyptic apocalyptic games uh, we'll be playing this because it just released I believe yesterday or today and we'll be playing this game it's, uh, if, if you're not familiar what sort of game is it, it is it's very much in, in the line of um, Fallout 1 or 2 and set in the Soviet post well Soviet Union after apocalypse and we'll be playing as the member of Ada Atom group that was uh, set up to um, restore Soviet Union or something like that sort of like Brotherhood of Steel but not just restore technology uh, but also the society eventually and I think we'll be going with uh, more or less the same character as I played in Alpha it was sort of a yeah Sniper, Alia Moldagulova, hero of the Soviet Union. I've tinkered a little bit with uh, with character creator. And I think f for one of the distinction I will go for Gladden, because plus two seems like so much. And plus two to attributes. I think we're gonna go and reduce it to like three, so we'll now have nine character points. We'll go for six strengths. Um, from what I understand, the weapons have, even like ranged weapons, have uh, strength requirements. So we're gonna need some strength for sure. We'll, we'll try to go for 10 dexterity because I remember 8 dexterity just simply were not enough. And 9 doesn't seem like a just odd number. I, I'm not sure if we'll be able to shoot twice. I think 10, 10 is a good number. We'll be able to shoot twice with anything with 5 action points. Intellect, I would, you know what, luck, I don't need luck, I will rely on skill, pure skill. We'll go with something like that and probably a little bit more attention, that way A, we will be moving faster for, uh, first and we will be having better chance to hit, right, for ranged combat. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Also, we'll go with probably sex appeal. Because from what I remember playing Alpha, there really wasn't that many female characters of any importance. So we'll go with that. Okay. I think that's good enough. The idea behind this character will be try to stay as far away as possible and kill them before they get to me without getting shot or anything. So that's the idea. What do I want? I have still 20 skill points. I will probably want speechcraft. Let's make it 50. And then... Uh, let's get technology to, let's say, 50. Lockpicking. Sure, lock lockpicking. Rest, rest of them. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that for now. I think that's a decent character. And and we'll we'll see how it goes. Maybe there is a it is possible to increase the attributes in the game, like in Fallout, but I'm really not not sure. Most likely, though, most likely. Uh, I don't think we'll be going for anything like expert or survival, because saving outside of battle just will not work. I don't think for um, let's play. So we'll go with that with normal difficulty. Black operative jacket and matching pants. Bright uniform for item. Oh, I guess that's a un starting uniform you're, you're you're starting with. Uniform you're starting with. Sleeveless shirt and shorts. Best shirt for an action hero. Green military jacket and pants. Belonging to a known, known army regiment. <laughs> let's go for an action hero. Or veteran. Black jacket. Yeah, you know what? Let's go for an action hero. Atom, a 
branch of the Soviet army created long before the war, caused by the imperialist conquerors. Our mission does not end in gathering pre-war technology and reviving our Soviet motherland. We also strive to reach the pre-war quality of life for all. To realize those goals, we often send search expeditions into the wasteland. Not long ago, one of such expeditions, led by General Morozov, lost all contact with the base. Our human resources are limited. Therefore, the standard procedure is to send out but a few agents to investigate this problem. You are one of the chosen for this mission. General Morozov's troops had an important quest to locate, control, and study a secret bunker. Bunker 317. According to our data, it is located near the village of Otradnoya. To successfully complete your mission, we recommend you to contact our agent in the city of Krasnos Nemonye, codenamed Fidel. He's hiding in plain sight as a barkeep in the outskirts of the city. So apart from physical aid, he can offer you informational support as well. You will learn the password needed to contact our agent from the envelope. Destroy it upon reading. And remember, your mission is to gather intelligence on the disappearance of Morozov and his troops. No heroics. The wastes are a dangerous place. Good luck, cadet. And let there be atom. Yeah, that's fine. What a calm night. Uh, a bit too calm, if you ask me. God damn it! There's an AK here. It should be ours. But it won't be, because we'll be robbed. I think it's the same start as the Alpha. I don't think anything will change. From uneven shadows the, uh, that are dancing around your campfire emerges a well-built man in his 30s. Dressed in a must, musty hockey uniform. Well, would you look at that? A girl, all alone in this parts of waste. Are you perchance lost? The man stops before you and drops his hands, as if to warm himself, or to show you a formidable brass knuckle on knuckle on his left hand. Or maybe you're like a little Red Riding Hood, delivering food to your sick grandmother, and all those bags of yours. The man whistles, sizing, uh, sizing up your equipment. That's very careless. What if some big bad wolf were to start chasing you? I mean, you wouldn't last a hundred meters with such a heavy luggage. The stranger phrase breaks into Omni, into Omni's smile. Me and my pals could help you carry it. Well, not for free, of course, but for a very manageable price. What do you say? Finally notice human figures hidden in the dark of the night, and if you still had some doubt about what is transpiring, you're, uh, now it's becoming painfully clear, you're being robbed. Well, we have pretty damn high speechcraft, so we'll go with speech, speechcraft. Listen, I would share, but I don't have a lot of money, a, a lot myself, only a bare minimum for survival. Be a human being, leave me alone. The man smiles and winks at you. Don't worry, honey. It won't hurt you. I just uh, wanted to browse through your stuff for for a sec. Who knows? Maybe we won't take everything. You can lay down and rest for a while. Uh, while we're at it, what do you mean? Oh. Take the loot, man. We have a good catch tonight. My K, no. They even took the freaking the freaking X, bastards. Well, okay, alt is, yeah. Empty canteen. Let's see what's inside the... Not a lot. What's that? Plus night to speechcraft. Well, that's something. Is it going here? Oh. Hmm. Hunger. Can I, like, actually see it? What... No, oh, it reduces endurance and strength by one, probably. Right? Can I can I see the effects? Yeah, strength, endurance, minus healing rate. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to find some food. Oh. 
Let's see. Well, there's a spoon. Uh, it's locked. How do you... Do you... Oh, there we go. Unlock. Good. Duct tape? Really? Electrical tape. Is there anything like here, like any sort of food here? I'd really appreciate some food, but... I don't remember hung hunger being in, in Alpha. It's probably new. Is there anything here that I can loot, maybe? Like some... No, it doesn't look like it. Bastards. Well, hopefully I'll be able to find something. Don't like that. No, oh, it's Atradne, okay. Also, that was wheat, right? Over there, like in, in the cinematic, it was definitely wheat. Why don't we eat wheat? I'm pretty sure you can eat wheat just roar. We're hungry. Shouldn't be picky, you know? But I, what I also need to do is equip a freaking knife, because I, I took it, but I didn't equip it. Uh, there we go. Before we go inside, Let's let's go and investigate a little bit more. I'm pretty sure there was something here. Yeah, there it is. Huh. Um, Dr. Thurman. I guess addiction addicted means that you can get addicted to it. Popular belief states that it can cure just about anything. Well, beggars can be choosers. Let's take that. I can try to run and grab whatever is in there. Oh, there's a... I think it's it, it involves some sort of a quest, but... For now, let's just ignore it. Oh, what? what no, no. <laughs> that's that's just that's just where where I'm going. Let's go and see what's here. Uh, can I eat the, the mushrooms? No. I remember this was somehow involved with the quest, but there was somehow you can you could. Yeah, you could get get inside. There. Okay, unlocked. Some gunpowder. Bottle of water. Uh, well, let's take all for now. Well, I don't know. For now, let's take everything. We'll figure it out for, for later. Let's quick save. Uh, there was something with that nutcracker. It, it like dropped something. Was there a rat here somewhere that will attack or something? Definitely remember something was happening here with the... Like he dropped like a golden nut or something.
<laughs> damage 100 to 1000 only for imaginary targets a toy machine gun made of wood both for playing war and for protecting the treehouse you can see part of the owner's name carved into the stock it says Gree was it do I need to like give it to or can I like right I don't remember where you got the the safe num the safe code But I'm pretty sure we'll figure it out. <laughs> if nothing else, I'll go watch my, my previous let's, let's Play of Alpha and I'll figure it out. Okay, there has to be some food here, right? Really? Well, okay then, let's just go inside the... the thing. Can I craft anything? Custom made crossbow. What's that? Pearl up? Yeah. A bag? Alright, we don't have... Respirator. Zip gun. Broken ball. Some shotgun. Okay. Interesting. Really cool. Well, let's go and hopefully get some food there. Before he's turned strongly built man, age around 30. He's wearing a weathered military jacket and holds a large gun in his hands. Further inspection, he seems like a, an affable guy that would probably welcome a conversation with a random stranger. He absently chews a blade of grass, but upon seeing you, he uh, levens up. Hey there, comrade! And hello to you too! And coughs and spits out the blade of grass, then removes his hand from his rifle, letting it uh, hang by, by its handmade leather belt. Nice to meet you, my name is Jan. May I ask what brings you to our village? I'm looking for someone. Someone who lives here? Not really. Okay then, so how may I help you out? I want to ask a couple of questions. Were there a troop of military types in your village lately? Funny you should ask. A squad of troop came, troops came through the village not long ago. I could say if they were military though. But they headed some had some serious looking dudes, good weapons on them, and their attitude was pretty militant. They were even wearing uniforms of sorts, some serious guys I tell you, real serious. They bought some water, rested for a day near the walls and moved on. I got chatting with the youngest guy among them, he said they were on an expedition to the ruins, probably looking for some pre-war tech, or what remains of it, God help them, they seemed normal enough. Can you point me in the direction of those ruins? Jan takes your map and after looking at it for a while draws a small black cross in one spot. After looking at the map again he returns it to you. Here it is, not too far away. Thanks, can I ask another question? Do you have any work around here? Some work can always be fun, for one, our tech guy disappeared somewhere. Uh, Stabilov was his surname. He loves a drink from time to time, sometimes even goes on a bender, but it's not like him to be gone for so long. Last time we saw him, he was pretty drunk, bring about becoming a millionaire re real soon, and now he's just gone. Maybe he earned his million and ran off. Maybe so, but would he get a mil where, where would he get million rubles? Uh, something is shady about this whole situation. Yen shrugs his shoulders and vigilantly stares into distance before turning back to you. Why one or another, we could use a woman that's good with her hands around here. 
That's right. Um. Any other jobs? You ask in the tavern. It belongs to a brother and sister, Vasya and Kanya Rachetka. Maybe some of them, uh, someone from the village is looking for help. I don't know. I see. Oh, tell me about the village. What do you want to know? Okay, we're gonna buy and sell. Um, how's life? Our village is great. It was founded right after the war. Comrade Kavalev, our head, built it around an old oak tree with first settlers. And now that oak stands in the middle of the settlement, it's our main attraction somewhat. Or should I say mascot? You would not believe me, but I was told that people ran around the waste after the bombs fell. They were looking for food and water, but everything around was simply dust and burnt earth. But here, I saw this oak and water running nearby it was clear. That's pretty strange if you ask me. Ian smiles, but suddenly his smile disappears, turning into a boat. The man looks just like he ate a whole lemon. Life though sucks, I'll be honest with you, it sucks. There is a drought and I don't know if you heard, but we are being terrorized by bandits. Bandits could come each month demanding money. We tried fighting them, but we tried making peace with them. Nothing works, they're stronger than we are. And nobody can help you? We sent a man once in, into the big city, Krasnozamionny, so that he could hire us a few mercenaries. With all the money we had, we could only get seven men. Uh, they uh, they soon arrived, looking serious and tough with their fancy guns, proud of themselves. I wish I could tell you that they fought the bandits uh, and they stopped harassing us. I wish I could tell you that, but the wasteland is not a fairy tale world. <laughs> the bandits kill all seven of them, of our men, and then demand we pay them even more the following month. They said we needed to pay more because we obviously had the money to for the mercenaries. Okay. And... Heard any rumors lately? One person about told me somewhere in the waste is this old abandoned Boy Scout camp. But it's not entirely abandoned. It he told me that all the Boy Scouts were there before war started and are still there. But now they're feral and worship the devil in, the, in their rituals. He also told me that it's possible they are not Boy Scouts at all. Just some monstrous creatures that took the forms of, our, of the kids trying to mimic us humans. If you ask me, that's just a huge load, load of bull. Clearly I'm not the man to be asked about rumors. You should chat with people in the village, maybe they'll know. Okay, I see you later. See you, bye. Um, for your information and exclusive investigation by our... Okay. Let's go talk with the brother and sister, because they will probably have some food. You there. There stand up, stands a plump red-faced man, aged around 25. He's wearing a white shirt and some rather short shorts. He has a well-kept beard in his hands. Uh, there is a clean towel he uses to swat annoying flies. Upon seeing you, he, the man gives you a wide smile. Oh, a visitor, welcome to the tavern. A lot of travelers here these days. What do you mean? Well, you're here right now, and not long ago a band of armed people came through the village. People with guns usually mean trouble around these parts, but they were pretty civil, just like really army men. Hmm, can you tell me more? Not much more, they were chatty. Our village had w weren't chatty, our village had wanted to uh, speak to them about some issue, but they just left, so I don't think he struck any deal with them. I talked to our gate guard more than to anyone else, his name is Yan. If you're interested in knowing about those guys, I suggest you speak with, to him. Yeah, anyway, maybe you need a drink or, or some food. Yeah, I would definitely need some. Are there any jobs you might have, might need me for, though? You know, that's not my thing. You'd better ask my sister. I'm just an ordinary guy. I want to, to sell some self-made beer and, or moonshine to travel. Um, that I'd do gladly. Uh, need something done around the house? A light bulb, screw uh, or... Uh, a light bulb screwed or chair fixed, for example. Just me, give me a call. But some more serious stuff is for Katya's ears. She's a proactive one. He looks at the young lady who seems to be lost in some calculations. It's just that she's pretty busy right now trying to tallying up the expenses, planning the budget. You know, 
when and when Katya is busy, it's honestly pretty hard to get her attention. No, but I just thought of something. You know what? She loves making all sorts of potions, uh, tinctures, and spirits. That's what. Can't really understand why, but she's quite into that old chemistry stuff. Um, not that it matters. Look, I think you should. What you should do is go to to her and tell her that I sent you to taste the last liquor she made. You'll have a drink and talk business while you're at it. Smart, huh? I think it is. Well, thanks for advice. Now let's see what you have. Definitely need some. What does it? Plus three to speechcraft. <laughs> yeah, it's too expensive though. Can we eat it right away? Minus 600 to hunger, but it's toxic. Okay. Oh, water reduced toxic. Well, we definitely need some meat. Right, to remove the strength penalty. That's for sure. Hmm. Do we sell that uh, the uh, that gun? I'm 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 afraid like it's needed for something, so I will not sell it. Can we scrounge up some nineteen rubles uh, rubles some somewhere somehow? Newspaper. Let's done. And there we go. Trade. Close. Thanks, I'll go now. Wait a second, would you like to hear an unusual business proposal? Sure, let's hear it. Uh, the matter is pretty simple, a small job, really. What I need is uh, for you to bring me this book I ordered. It's all the way in Krasnoznamionny. Abraham, the local bookseller, has it uh, at his store. can go get it myself because of all the work around the bar. I can tell you that you're. Uh, I can tell you that you're quite a traveler. Maybe you could bring um, bring it from the city. It's already been paid for, and I will pay you for the for your troubles. What do you say? Sure. If I'll get across to Znamionny, I'll visit this Abraham char character. What this book about? Well, see, the <laughs> there was this writer named I love that, that that thing named Tolkien who lived in English, England, which was a country way back before the war. And he, well, he kind of wrote fairy tales for adults, you know? You should probably call it science fiction or, or, or not. I'm not good with, uh, with gen genres. Doesn't matter, the book is about another world. Anywho, I, I always loved reading books, especially in, if uh, there were about something extraordinary, something fantastic. Uh, where there's robots and the rings of Saturn and ancient Greek myths. And all that kind of stuff. And when uh, then I was told that Abraham Krasnoznamionny can get me the Tolkien book. And with a special translation too. Anyway, I drove to the city and ordered it, but now that it's it's there, I can't find time to go back and pick it up. It's a deal. I'll get you your book. Oh, thank you so much. Here's the recipe for recipe for the book. Just show it to Abraham and give it uh, he'll give it to you. The bartender sends a small Square of a thick paper, some written it on it, written in a formidable cursive or words. The owner of this document, Rachinko VA, or his legal proxy, may obtain a copy of Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, translated to Russian by uh, Bobert Z.A. Find and handing over the recipient signed um, Mirkin A.D. Okay, bye. Now, let's eat. Ooh, that's good. Hopefully it'll last me a little bit. I probably will be able to get some, some more stuff. Before we sits a young woman, she is concentrating on writing something down, a yellow notebook which has the word accounting on the cover. She is completely immersed in this activity and does not notice you. Hello, your brother sent me to you. He said you have a new liquor to taste? 
The girl stops her calculations and stares at you blankly. After a moment, she blinks, then sm uh, she smiles and tucks the tiny pencil. Stop behind her ear. I see. Well, that's great. I doubt you've ever drank anything quite like it. It's a new recipe, you see. Well, not really new, more like forgotten by everyone. Well, I'm really inclined to try it. The girl nods and shows you, you uh, to a darker, cooler corner of the tavern. From behind the bar, she produces a clay bottle labeled with the letters triple X. Here, drink. Boldly drink it up. Careful, take a tiny sip. The, uh, the drink has a strange sour taste. You shrug and hand the bottle back to the girl. You do not feel intoxicated, not even nauseous. Feel that you can take another sip. You take the bowl and have another. What a, what a, what harm can, can a few more sips do? You're starting to feel a little dizzy. It's not serious. It's nothing serious. At least you can still feel all of your extremities. You feel as if they're floating in the air, as if air was thick like water. Your mouth is starting to feel dry, and you decide to take another drink of liquor in in order to not dry out completely. Here goes a voice coming from afar. Oh, it's best you don't. Too late, you've already swallowed your drink. The one around you has stopped. You also have stopped. But you feel your thoughts are very clear. God damn it, I will be hungry again. And very clear and moving fast in your head. What am I doing here and why? Why am I here? Why did I drink this poison? What for? The sounds of your own thoughts resemble a thunderstorm that's uh, gr growling far away, but... Um, it is getting closer with every second, and you realize that the sounds you mistook for sound of thunder and fuck steps. From, uh, from out of the misty void, General Morozov appears before you. You're looking for me, he asks, and his voice is like a hundred voices in one. You cannot reply, you're frozen. Looking for me, yeah? You're looking for me, says uh, Morozov and takes your hand. Let's go. You're wandering through a thick gray fog. Morozov is walking in front of you. You're following him. The general confidently paves the way, and the only thing left for you is to, f to do is to follow him. Finally, fog is clearing, and you see a marvelous view in front of you. Mushrooms. <laughs> a gigantic, unreal, primordial mushroom forest. There are huge trunks uh, are thicker than the biggest oaks you've ever seen. Their tops uh, obscure the sky like giant umbrellas. The general continues to lead you onward, waving around the massive mushrooms. Uh, you're you, you tour uh, through fantastic forest, stop suddenly. Uh, your, your tour, okay. A uh, truly colossal mushroom, bigger than all else. This is God, says <laughs> Morozov. <laughs> but you can't see him anymore because he speaks from inside you. He speaks from your head, using your mouth. You are General Morozov. <laughs> suddenly the earth starts to shake and you struggle to keep your balance. It feels like an earthquake. When it's over, you look up on the mushroom giant and... The scream is heard from miles and miles around. The mushroom has a giant human face, but bow down, says the mushroom, and you faint. <laughs> God damn it, I'll, I'll pro I'm probably hungry again. Who's that? You faint and fall asleep for some hours after... No, it's not, I'm not hungry. After waking up, you feel no headache or any other signs of hangover. What the... Alive! Vasya, she's alive! You see the girl holding you up uh, so you don't fall on the, fall on the floor. Your stability returns as a strange sensation of um, tincture to leave you completely. The bartender, swear, uh, swearing quietly, wipes the sweat from his brow. How are you feeling? Surprisingly well, actually. She's strong, that one. Damn, what an idiot I, I am. Overdone with a potion. Sorry, what a damn shame. I almost killed the girl. Yeah, the girl lets out an, uh, an exhale and gives you a smile. We've watched over your things while you were out. Feel free to check. Check belongings to discover that you have not been robbed. <laughs> Miracles really do happen in life. I still don't understand why it turned out so so, so strong. I used my gra grandfather's recipe <coughs> uh, that my grandma recorded. She says speaking to herself mostly. Okay, anyway, we need to have a talk. Gotta be sure your brain is completely recovered. Uh, can I ask you some questions? I'm listening. Uh, I'm looking for a job. Do you have any tips? 
Everyone's looking for a job around here, but I'm afraid I can't help you personally. What I can do is recommend you to Comrade Kovalev, our village head. He always had, has some work to be done. Uh, but he's a respected man around here. He won't do business with someone he never seen before. Recommending a stranger to him is sort of unprofessional. Maybe if you, you'd help me with some chores first, I'd, I'd know I can trust you. What do you need help with? Oh, well, I'm ashamed to ask, but I need some toadstools. Uh, don't have enough free time to do it on my own. Maybe you could help me out? Picking just five toadstools would do. They grow on the other side of the fence, not far from here. Are you up for it? So maybe we'll skip the mushroom part, because I'm I'm a serious mo woman, very busy. I think I, I think I can still gather the mushrooms and still give it to her. Okay. Fine, I'll get your mushrooms. Thanks, I'll be leaving. I'll be waiting, fine. Who are you? See, mus muscular man in, in the, uh, near the bar. He eats uh, minced meat from... meats out of a can and washes it down with vodka. His face looks familiar to you. Yes, of course, it's another item, cadet. Uh, you knew before being sent on a rescue mission. After the Lock's Desk expedition, you never were friends, but you still recognize him. His name is Alexander. Oh, hey. The big guy turns to you and squinting a little. Finally, he waves at you. Hey there, Alia. Uh, didn't recognize you. This, uh, superstitious belief that it's meant you will get rich. Yeah. What are you doing here, anyway? Alexander sniffs, looks at the barkeep and the girl on the, uh, at one of the tables. Then he whispers to you. Oh, honey, come on. What am I doing here? Did you did you really think that you were the only one who was sent to look for Morozov and his crew? No, it was. it's just uh, that we were sent here at different times. First you, uh, then a bit later me. I, I just stumbled upon this village myself. Uh, so is life and waste treating you okay? What are you, my mother? Don't answer. I can see you're not her. <laughs> Life's okay. Well... It's not like they say in my native uh, Georgia, a sweet peach, but it's okay. Uh, you suddenly remember that neither Alexander nor his family are from Georgia. <coughs> Sorry, I've been speaking for too long. <laughs> uh, but you politely decide to keep it to your, to your mouth shut about it. I'm just uh, so concerned about the last expedition, it's... It's so important to me to find it, you know? So important, both for my body and my soul. I'm actually investigating an elite right now, in this bar. I shared some clues with you, but what's the point? Better look for your own clues. You might find them faster that way. Uh, that's a weird logic, but... Let's ask me ask some, you something else. Uh, heard anything interesting? Started tending to my muscle as of late, do, uh, doing some bodybuilding, you know? I doubt a shrimp like you would find that interesting, though. Yes, why do you need this? You, my friend, only think of uh, material aspects of life. And you, you and I don't know each other well, but I'm almost sure that if you were... Sure that for you, this is just another means to an end. Knocking out doors, scaring people, lifting heavy things that are required for your mission, but me! To me, you know, to me, strength is beauty. The hidden beauty that makes girls around you blush and drop their pants down. Yeah, boy! <laughs> yeah, boy! I <laughs> shows off his muscles to you. They're quite large and uh, his hand looks like industrial chimney. So you didn't learn anything of importance. How should I put it? Long ago, I was walking through a forest and I might have uh, had something to drink. Just a little. What are you, a cop? <laughs> Were you a cop before the war? Uh, I think since they work both, cadet, cadets, she's probably not. Are you gonna send me uh, to a clinic? No? Well, then listen carefully. So, suddenly I hear, holy crap, on cracker, a child is crying in the woods. In the woods. Wah, wah. It sounds so real, I swear to God. I kept on walking, of course, obviously it's some kind of new mutant, that legend, how they learn how to imitate a child's cry to lure people into a trap, sure. 
But you know, if, it, if it wasn't, I don't feel like dealing with babies. I'm not that guy. Maybe not alive, but not right now. And I advise you to do the same if you hear something like this, especially in an unpopulated area. Well, uh, better go now. I was hoping you would be more useful. Who are you? Oh, just some local, I guess. See a man wearing a tinfoil hat. He's shifting from one foot to another and from time to time shouts out some phrases that make no sense in languages you don't understand. Small pig is sitting in, uh, at his feet. It has obviously arrived to the village together with the ma madman. As you come closer, the chaotic movements of the man lips immediately stop. He, his insane gaze stops wandering and focuses on you. The idiot has come to look at the mirror and the mirror is calling her an idiot. What do you want? Do you want to ride Wink? I wonder uh, I won't let a pig piggyback a pig. This would be have been w that would have been wrong. Bring me a human and Wink will give him a ride for money, for an expensive coin and to get its daddy some fire fire water. Uh, what's wrong with you? Right, right. What's wrong with me? Everything is right with me. Rigitikitavi, right? Uh let's me rephrase my question. Uh, who are you? Who am I? I am... The old man grabs you by the shoulders and comes nose to nose with you. So you quickly... Uh, so quickly you can't even... With you so quickly that even the pig that was used to his company stares and dries its snout. Yes, who are you? I am... The old man breaks into a fit of deafening squeaking laughter drops his... Saliva shoot into your face, his uh, stinky mouth lacking uh, half of his teeth. An unbearably rotten breath almost provokes a vomiting reflex in you. The laughter of the madman lasts for a few seconds, during which he keeps shaking you and jumping in, in a way that vaguely resembles a tribal dance. Finally, he freezes and stom a smile of many, uh, with a smile of many, he pronounces one word. Nobody. So, are you Odysseus or something? Okay, I have some other questions, maybe? <laughs> Will you share your madness with me? Uh, tell me about yourself. I spit, I spit on you, damn you. Don't come to me with this issue. This is wrong. Robos, blue worm, nameless. Born as an adult turned idiot, walking after a flying arrow uh, she can't even see. Look at her. Talking to us as if she was real, choosing one of one out of five. Um, one out of five is the best case scenario. When the fat one is uh, not too lazy, she sees herself only from the top and never with her own eyes. And she dares to approach us, you fake facsimile. I'll make you go away. Oink will chase after you so that you don't stop running. I squash this silly facsimile. Huh. Finally resemble the diabolism that has been described since the ancient times. It, it's an absurd assumption, however. Tell me your name, demon. The, my, the man eyes with blank look in them suddenly focus on you for the first time during the conversation. He clenches his fists, arches his chest, makes a step forward to you. Enough of your lies, Broad. Uh, uh, asks, Broad uh, asks my uh, the name of the boys at the village dance. Not mine. Who do you think you are? What do, you, what you want to insult us? By the way, we haven't been introduced. What's your name? You're stepping back, friend, because after, right after your words, the old man's face gets distorted with a truly satanic grimace. His blurry eyes pop out of the orbits. Uh, the lower jaw hangs down almost the man's sunken chest. His yellow, yellowish tongue rolls out like an oily piece of cloth. The voice this you are hearing following the, this transformation sounds nothing like the old man spoke in all his, this time. The voice is of... Poly polyphonic nature it's composed of thousands of voices that, sp that speech hiss and roar roar and howl in an uneven unison <clears throat> the man speak who's seen a lot of 
it's uh, a lot in its life moves three steps away from its master. Frighteningly pressing its uh, speckled ears against its its head. Our name is the next word sounding like something that <coughs> has its roots in your native language, but the same time is incredibly alien, makes you shudder. Monocle, monoclone, savage of savager of the steps. Why are you summoning us, you ugly freak? Hey, monocle, or whatever. Uh, what do you want with this man? <laughs> By the will of Central Committee of Communist Party of the Soviet Union. Leave this uh, proletarian, you evil spirit. Get out. Yes. You're speaking bravely with inspiration and passion, but the old man's reaction makes the end of your phrase get stuck in your throat. The madman literally transforming in front of your eyes. The sound of squeaking, of squ the sound of squealing of the scared pig, whose s s uh, short, rough bristle rises up on its hunched back. The demon possessed, possessed man gets completely pale. His blurry eyes filled with blood. Several blood vessels bur uh, burst under the parchment's uh, like skin of his hollow cheeks, con converting his horrendous, unnatural-looking face with crimson web. He doesn't just pronounce, but more like vomits his next words. Damned! Die! May your whole mother turn thrice in on a rod! May your, may your kin die out, scum! <laughs> you, you're burning me! You're burning me! You, you fucking whore! I, that's like some sort of a scene from... <laughs> from what's it called? Exorcist? Leave this proletarian alone, you counter-revolutionary being! Man, man, man is hissing and uh, hiding his uh, scared eyes from you. Give me another home and I might leave. Where will you invite me to? Point at the pig. Here is your new... Here is your new, uh, your new house. You couldn't find a better one? Yeah, let's go with that. You scurry to the side because the madman makes the unexpectedly lo loud snore, being over, uh, bending over the pe uh, petrified pig. <laughs> you hear a noisy exhale, and the old man is reeking, barely standing on his feet. The pig makes a crazy, almost human-like scream and starts running away. After you watch it go, uh, you turn. A <laughs> I love that exorcism with communism. <laughs> That's absolutely fucking amazing. <laughs> you turn your attention to your uh, intro interlocutor again. His face begins regaining human features and healthy complexions, but the most surprising change has happened to his eyes. Blurry and wild before, they are looking surprised and lost, but also alert and focused. Uh, it would seem that one could draw only one conclusion, a bit unbelievable and fantastical, from what just happened. Something has moved from the old man into the pig, filling it with madness. However, you can can't fully agree with this conclusion. For one, because you've noticed that the, before his animal started running, the old man had slapped it rather hard on its uh, blush pink side. Uh, just whoa. Shaking old man in a tinfoil hat is standing in front of you. He's looking at you in awe. Oh, oh my savior, let me, let me kiss you right on your lips. Uh, you don't want to? Well, sorry, sorry. Old habits. What was that you wanted? <laughs> Are you feeling? Much better, I guess. It's a bit of an unusual feeling, but I'll get used to it. Thank you once again. Let me ask you some questions. Tell me about yourself. Remembering so hard, I close my eyes, I feel like hundred years ago, when I was just a plumber, Maxim, and it's only now that my eyes are open for the first time. What the world is like, I, I won't say it's unknown to me, but it's like I saw through the dream before, through a smoky glass, and now it's so sharp, ouch, my cut, it cuts uh, my, eye with, uh, my eyes with truth, I've got mm, to get used to it. I've got to look for my place in it and make sure the place won't be able, uh, won't be in the quicksand. 
Can I ask you something else? What are you planning to do now? I was wondering, uh, looking at where to apply myself, I came to a hut of a lonely woman. I knew her. I had seen her through the veil. It had been over my mind before I met you. There was a need for someone who could who chopped the logs for Adam. I became that someone. Uh, I was warmed up, it was warm, I ate some food and was given some f some for the road. Can surviving on kindness of stranger become, become one's profession? I'd like to think so, my dear, and I'll find that woman again, That now that I'm clean. Uh, do I want to one? What can you tell me about the village? This place is called the Tradne. And under, I don't understand why I found myself here. That's a joy, thank you, my dear, but I should, shouldn't be here. An ectopic pregnancy, I was thrown to the world now, not where I was carried to terms. I guess I'll go home by, by the evening. Maybe I'll come back to have a walk and play some pranks. And to watch, everything's so crispy. Hmm... <laughs> Well, I guess some rumors. The more surefire rumor is that a lot of people know about. A different rumor is made up. It's just a figment of imagination. As the scientists put it, phant uh, phantasmagoria, or in other words, puzzle of flesh. F uh, fruit fruitless flesh, it can't get far. A good rumor is one with a solid turn, uh, truth to back it up. Both smart and stupid men will tell you it different words but with someone and the same core be aware of, rumor of the rumors about crazy and horrible things that fly over many tanks my dear because of their uh, core has not yet been touched by the war yeah i'd better go okay i think i will make a cut here and we'll continue in the next episode where we'll be gathering mushrooms so thank you for watching hopefully you enjoyed it and goodbye